Star in My Hand, Ruben Dario Poetry Hero, written by Margarita Ingle. This is pages 65 through 75. As you listen, make sure you also read along so that you can notice when the author makes line breaks and makes other visual choices. Since this is a video, make sure that you are pause it anytime you need to go back and reread or re-listen to any of these. Melancholy. Melancholy means uh, feeling sad. Sorrow transforms me. I feel as if an invisible hand is pushing me towards the unknown. But people who come to Lyon for a glimpse of the famous poet boy are never disappointed. I'm always ready to entertain them with passionate verses. There is no greater inspiration than sadness. But ay Dios, my God, how willing, how willing I would be to trade this sense of uselessness for travel, any adventure, a hopeful voyage, like the ones I used to read about in the shade of my beloved gourd tree and a pomegranate. An Invitation Senators come to Lyon just to hear the poet boy read a hurricane of verses. When I finish the performance, they invite me to visit Managua, the capital city of Nicaragua. And now all my daydreams of roaming are suddenly real. Moving away from home. I feel winged. Sunlight fills my breath, my lungs. I am as blessed as one of Victor Hugo's desolate characters in Les Miserables, a poet witness accepted by influential men despite my vast range of past failures. I leave with Bernardo's blessing, but soon as I pass the peaceful blue waters of Lake Chocolatan, the fuming volcano called Momotombo, I begin to wonder if my small town rhymes will ever be eloquent enough for city dwellers. But I'm 15 years old, with a star of hope clasped in my hand, so I keep my eyes lifted toward the future's limitless sky. A Celebrity How could I have known that I would already be so famous, paraded at parties and official banquets where eloquent ladies constantly ask me to write original poems on their fancy silk fans. Sonnets about their beauty. I imagine that's what they expect, and sometimes it's the sort of verse I'm able to produce on short notice, but there are other days when all I want to say is la verdad, the truth, serving as history's honest witness. An act of Congress. The senators vote about my future, deciding to send me to France. In Paris, I will receive such a dreamlike education studying with Europe's greatest masters of poetry. All of those years ago during Easter week when I saw my own childhood verse raining down from a golden pomegranate, there was no way for me to foresee this new shower of generous blessings. disappointment. The President of the Republic destroys all hope for a state-funded education. He uses his veto power to deny the act of Congress that passed in my honor. He calls my poetry insulting, even though the verse he objects to is just a parable about an angry ruler who smashes his crown against a throne. Yes, of course, I'll continue to criticize foolish leaders wherever I find them. That's a decision I made at the edge of a swamp when I saw a man's severed hand flying. Poets must speak no matter the punishment. We are observers with musical voices testifying in the courtrooms of nature and human life. A world of books. 
Stranded in this hectic city, I have to find a job, so I decide to apply to the National Library. And even though I'm so young, librarians accept me into their treasury of ancient thoughts and modern ones. Verses from so many nations. Fables, myths, fantasies, translations. Greeks and Romans, along with Aztecs and Mayas, the wisdom of so many civilizations swirls and blends, entering my imagination through the tangled gateways. Why shouldn't my poetry feature Pegasus alongside Quetzalcoatl? My ancestry is both Spanish and Indio, so my mestizo embraces the mixture. Independent thought. The library's silence is mysterious. Each book offers a gift of possibilities. Soon I'm writing while I read, combining my own endless sense of wonder with all the marvels already told in astonishing stories from history, sagas of travel, nature, families, conflict, and love, always love. Days pass, weeks, months. There's nothing to stop me from spending a lifetime immersed in this endless exploration of pages unless... Falling in love is like a cliff. N-O-T-A-S-L-O-P, not a slope. As soon as I've plummeted, I feel certain that everyone will disapprove because she's so young too and all we want is to be married right away. No reason to wait. Grown-ups can't stop us, can they? This flurry of verses. Passionate love poems fly from my pen, published in newspapers so that even strangers will know how much I love her. The girl with green eyes, cinnamon skin, dazzling laughter, and a magical voice that can sing any enchantment. In a garden of blue butterflies and flowering flame trees, we stargaze together clasped hands, absolute silence, first kiss, uncertainty. What if she doesn't really love me enough to accept my proposal? How can I wait years and years to get married until we're both older, wiser, and so much more boring? 